Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we'll be comparing a CX90 to a Honda Pilot to see which three row SUV is best. Before we begin this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Ken Garf Honda here in Orem for giving me some time with the Pilot, and to the Orem Mazda for giving me some time with the CX90. I'll include a link to both their websites in the description down below so you can check what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6 that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 19 around town and then 25 on the highway, with power outputs being 285 horsepower and then 262 pound feet of torque. Powering the Mazda is a turbocharged 3.3 liter inline 6 that goes through an 8 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 24 around town and then 28 on the highway, with power outputs being 280 horsepower and then 332 pound feet of torque. Now before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the front end design of the Pilot, you can see it's very boxy. That's what Honda's gone for with the new design. And notice how elements like the grill and everything are blacked out to create contrast. With the CX-90, it has kind of like a mix between boxiness and sort of like sleekness in a way they've rounded out things i mean look at the headlight design for example and then look at these elements here on the front how it's a little bit rounder but overall both of them you know i'd say pretty boxy with the front end design now around the side here our tire wheel setup is 255 50 20 in the front and over in the rear and you guys can see here with the bronze wheels on the pilot which create a cool contrast and then again you can see that box design continues with the rest of the side profile here now with the Mazda, our tire wheel setup is 275, 45, 21 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see with the wheels, you got silver on the finish. And then you can see with the fender flare and all the bodywork, just like the Pilot. Uh, but anyways, here's your full side view. You can see it goes from kind of like a boxier design at the front where it rounds off there in the back. So again, a little bit more unique with the styling, I'd say. Now take a look at the key fobs. You can see with the Honda key fob, you've got your lock, unlock, remote start, and then the opening for the hatch. The Mazda, uh, no remote start, but we do have lock and unlock and all of that, and same thing with the hatch. Now take a look at the cargo space here in the 90. You can see with the third row folded up, pretty typical of most SUVs in this segment. And then you can see we've got some outlets and everything here in the back. We also have a USB port here in the rear as well. And then you see cup holders there, and then lots of storage space with the third row folded down. Uh, now as for the third row, uh, again, reserve it for kids. Typically, you can fit adults in the back. And yeah, when you're all done, it's pretty easy. Just press this button and that will close everything up. Now, taking a look at the Pilot, you can see very similar setup. Now, we've got both seats folded down. Um, but yeah, storage space is really similar. I mean, these vehicles are like the exact same length, pretty much. And so the dimensions are very similar. You can see the USB port back here. Got a little 12 volt here in the back as well. Uh, so yeah, I'd say just as practical as the 90. Press that and that will lower the hatch right back down. Now when it comes to rear styling, again, how things like round off with the 90, I guess that does kind of affect the cargo verticality a little bit. I mean, you can see the Pilot quite a bit boxier overall. And again, that continues with the rest of the design elements. I mean, look at the taillights here, super boxy with the look. Whereas this, you can see kind of flows, looks a little bit more sleek. But let me know if you like the CX-90 styling more or if you like the Pilot. Now you can see the legroom back here is pretty solid. We got a little storage pocket and then look at the trim on the door panel. Also have a sunshade for the rear passengers. But yeah, really upscale appearance with everything, even the handle itself. And then you can see with heated seats in the back, got our own climate zone. And then look at these seats here. Really nice trim. I think that's fantastic. And the back seats don't have the perforated trim, but they still look nice. Uh, and then headroom back here. Now in the Pilot, again, space feels pretty similar. Got a little storage pocket here. Got vents, got our own climate zone in the back USBs. Got a cup holder armrest. And then you can see with the door panel, soft touch trim. A little bit more like rugged with the look, uh, if you can tell. And then these seats, pretty nice trim. This review would be a little bit better if I had the Elite version of the Pilot. That'd be a little bit more comparable to that Mazda, how that spec. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is still a nice interior. And then headroom, it's good. And... Let's start things up with the Mazda. So again, you can see the front door panel really upscale looking just like the back. And look at the window controls too. Really nice finish and all that. Blind spot running with the mirrors. And then again, upscale is the theme with the Mazda. Look at the steering wheel here with your adaptive cruise control. You've got your volume controls, all that. Paddle shifters in the back, by the way, for the eight speed. 
And then you got the three gauge layout, which looks pretty cool. Also, drive mode's fun. And then when it comes to camera system, we do have a 360 camera system with this CX90. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, it's not a touchscreen, everything's controlled via a dial. And then we do have soft touch trim all over the dash. You can see the stitching down below. And then again, look at the kind of the finish on everything. It's more upscale looking. We got dual zone climate, heated and ventilated seats with this. Then you can see the nice trim drive mode select right there with the shifter. So that's for the camera system. And then this is the control for the infotainment system. And I like how the center console opens up. It's pretty cool. And again, nice trim on top. And then look at the seats perforated all down the center portion. Uh, and then we do have a panoramic sunroof. And starting things up on the pilot, you can see again that theme of kind of like ruggedness continues with the door panel design. And then you got stuff like memory seats, blind spot warning with the mirrors. And then here is the steering wheel soft touch all around. You got practical controls like your cruise control and everything. Paddle shifters there on the back for the 10 speed. And then here's a quick look at the gauge cluster. Cool part with this, got the drive modes. Million different drive modes in the pilot, by the way. A lot more than 90. And then this one just has a traditional backup camera. And then as for the resting infotainment system, easy to use, it's a touch screen, not response time's great. Uh, soft touch trim on the dash, but again, look at the texturing. You can see, again, they've gone for more rugged utilitarian with the design. Dual zone climate, uh, heated seats, and then you got like your wireless phone charging pad down below, your interesting gear selector here, drive mode select stuff, and then you can see the cup holders, and then huge center console on this one. It's massive. Uh, and then we do have a panoramic center. Now when it comes to pricing, this is a little bit of an apples to oranges comparison, but that Mazda stickers for about 55,000, and then this Pilot stickers for about 53,000. Now you can get a Pilot Elite for about 55,000, which would be more comparable to that Mazda. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors do a blind spot room for the rest of the rear. And, well, let us set off in the pilot. We actually gotta go the other way. So, just a quick, uh, I guess, side note with the pilot review. <laughs> this, uh, this driving portion is gonna be used for my pilot review and then also CX-90 versus uh, pilot video as well just so that we're all on the same page here about what is happening. Now, first off with the Pilot, seats are, they've got pretty wide bolstering on the bottom. Um, it's pretty comfortable. A little bit, I, I wouldn't call them like super firm, but they, you can tell it's definitely a firmer seat. And I noticed that with more off-road oriented vehicles, is they always make the seats a little bit firmer. Which, I mean, makes sense with off-roading, you're gonna sit upright, so you're gonna want a firmer seat versus a softer seat you sink into. So that makes logical sense. V6 is very responsive. I think that's nice. Yeah, it's got a good punch to it. Smooth, it's just smooth. And the suspension's really comfortable too. This new Pilot just drives well. I think that... Yeah, I think that Honda's done a really good job with that. And the cabin's pretty well insulated too for the segment. So that's another nice feature. And let's get our little acceleration here. <laughs> the transmissions it's you know i wouldn't say it's like insanely snappy quick but it's smooth we'll get another one let's actually put it in the sport mode to yeah see what that's like oh man oh the traffic section not that bad i was gonna say i got unlucky but it's not as big of a line as there sometimes is here in good old orem utah but Let's get another acceleration here. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's pretty good with the acceleration. Again, naturally, that's pretty V6. 
no slouch. So yeah, to cap things off here with the Pilot Touring, this HPD package, I think what's cool on the outside, nice interior. Um, but what I will say is you have to really like these wheels for this package to make sense. Because if you're just, you know, a uh, feature buyer, I think an Elite, because I mean, this is $2,000 less than an Elite. And an Elite's gonna, you know, just be a little bit of a nicer car inside and all of that. So yeah, let me know you guys think about the touring package. Let me know you guys think about the HPD. Well, let's set off in the 90 and decide if this is the better family SUV with this turbocharged three liter, or sorry, why did I say three liter? 3.3 liter. <laughs> I guess I'm thinking of a BMW. Turbocharged 3.3 liter in line six. Um, and again, you guys can probably tell with the kind of interior on this, the theme 100% with the Mazda is luxury. Um, I think that you know, <laughs> this is playing right into Mazda's advertising, but I think that it's best to look at Mazda as an in-between brand. So not necessarily full on luxury because their pricing is not in the luxury market, but you know, their features are. And frankly, when you look at this interior and you compare it to like a BMW or an Audi at a similar price point, there's a lot of things in this interior that are nicer than BMW and Audi, uh, with, especially with the fin finish. And then the powertrain is definitely there. Powertrain is definitely there. Yeah, good torque right off the bat. And again, you gotta remember, this is the quote unquote low output version of this powertrain, the high output, so for 300 horsepower. Um, now I've, I've read the comments, some people have complained about these seats in Mazdas that they're too narrow. Um, I'm not a small person, I weigh I go for 210 pounds. And um, these seats, like, I feel comfortable in them. Um, I could see if you had like a really, really big stomach that these seats might be slightly uncomfortable, but like, um, overall, I mean, they're not bad, even on my, even on my legs. Like, it's not, it's, they're, they're fine. They're a little bit on the firmer side, but they're, again, not bad, not bad at all. Really comfortable too with the drive. Like the ride quality, I'd say is, is great. Again, more on the luxury car side of things. Powertrains definitely jumpier compared to what you expect in the segment. You got, again, way more torque than most vehicles in the segment. About the same amount of horsepower as everything else. But it's the torque that you're up. And pop it sport mode there. I like the animation on the gauge, it's pretty cool. And we'll get out of here before this traffic starts coming through so we can get a real acceleration. Such good performance. Such good performance. So let's sum things up here with this comparison, CX-90 versus Pilot. Here's the deal, I think both of them drive really well. They're just different. Mazda always kind of has like a sportier theme with the driving, so the handling's a little bit sharper, steering's a little bit sharper, and you do feel that with these two vehicles. Um, but yeah, both just as comfortable. And it, the biggest thing though is gonna be the interior themes. Like I said, this is all about luxury with the theme. You can tell with the design, with the material use, with all, everything that this car is going for, and the powertrain too. It's all kind of going for like per, luxury performance. It's a good way to put it. Like Mazda used to have their slogan, zoom, zoom, right? And so that's where the CX-90 is going to be the one that you're gonna to wanna to go for is if you're looking for more of a performance oriented car. Whereas with the Pilot, Again, they're going for more of like the rugged kind of off-roader type, you know, appearance with that car. And so if you want more of like a rugged utilitarian off-road feel, then that's what the Pilot is going to provide. So let me know which one uh, you like better, whether it's the CX-90 or the Pilot. Um, but I think that ultimately, you know, very similar in pricing with the vehicles, but just completely different themes. And I think what this shows me, because I've done quite a few comparisons with the CX-90 now, um, but what this shows me is, I think that Mazda now is, you know, they're in that in-between segment where they're, you know, people don't really consider them a luxury brand, but they're offering a lot of luxury brand features and build quality and all of that. And so, yeah, that's all.